Cool. So um, without further ado, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, we decided to do this um, because we've been getting a lot of requests from entrepreneurs and small business owners who are trying to kind of navigate uh, during this time. Um, so we are hosting small, intimate discussions, um, talking about a range of topics. Um, and then we're sharing out the contents uh, with uh, other entrepreneurs. Um, so that they can attend um, and also get access to to this knowledge. Um, I, I am recording that class for that purpose. Um, and if uh, if you if you don't want to be recorded, I encourage you to just take your take your video off. Um, and uh, and thank you guys so much for understanding. Uh, the, the delay, I just wanted to give a couple minutes for people to join. I think, Eric, you were trying to join later, earlier, right? And you were having trouble? Was that yeah, you? a little bit, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay. I think there's some other people that might be joining a little bit later, but they'll just jump in. Um, so without further ado, let me, I'm introducing Manny Cosme, who has been so kind to facilitate this workshop. Thank you so, so much for being here with us. Um, and feel free to take it away. No, good to be here. Uh, I'm excited to help. You know, we're really dedicated to helping all the small businesses and nonprofits that we can during this moment right now. We're doing a bunch of pro bono work um, just to, you know, in form of workshops like this and actually doing loan applications and things like that just to help out everyone in our small business um, community. So happy to um, be of help. So um, what we're going to talk about today, and this is going to be one of um, two at least, um, webinars that we're doing. So we're doing one today and we're doing one next week. Um, but this one is going to be focused on disaster planning. And then the next one we do is going to be more focused on where to get money. Um, but this one is going to be around disaster planning in uncertain times, which this definitely is one of them. And it's really about how to survive and thrive when the economy is in a downward turn, which is what's going on right now. Um, so thank you all for joining on a Friday afternoon. And if you're watching the recording, thanks for watching that. All right, so I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a quick intro. I'm gonna talk about my 10 do's and don'ts of what you should and should not be doing right now to um, have your business survive and thrive. I'll touch briefly on sources of capital where you can get money from. This is gonna be a very brief overview because I'm gonna dive more into that next week. And then I'll do open Q and A, all right? Um, so with that, I do ask that we just get through the material first. So if you do have a question, just maybe put it in the chat. Um, or just hold it until the end when we do Q&A, so at least I can get through everything and then we can circle back and chat, okay? Um, so right now, of course, we are in the middle of a pandemic. COVID-19 has hit, here we are. Uh, so because of that, we are facing not only a healthcare crisis, but an economic crisis as well. And so um, because of that, we have a lot of decisions to be making as business owners. So right now, you can decide whether you want your business to survive and thrive during this period of time, or are you going to let it sink? Okay, so that decision is really up to you. My job as a CFO, as an advisor, as a consultant, is to help you if you decide that you want your business to grow and thrive. My job is to help you figure out what you need to do in order to make that happen. And let me promise you that every single one of you that have a business no matter what field you're in right now, you can grow. I've talked to hundreds of business owners at this point over the last few weeks, including I was just on the uh, National Small, Small Business Town Hall. I'm actually on that panel every Friday now, now as the accounting expert. And uh, so literally there are 8,000 people on this morning and this discussion came up and I promised everyone that no matter what industry you're in, I, I promise you we can figure out a way that you can grow right now. So it's really up to you, okay? What do you wanna do? My job is then to help you do that, okay? And really it's all about mindset. It's all about what mindset are you gonna put yourself in so that you can go there. Are you going to succumb to the fear and the anxiety that's here right now? Or are you gonna recognize the opportunity that exists so that you can grow, okay? So that's my job as your CFO, as I said, is to help you make that decision to grow, to help you figure out what resources you have available to you so that you can pivot and take advantage of the opportunity right now. There is actually a lot of opportunity right now. And in fact, um, if you know history, 
um, one of the, the great things that came out of the Great Depression of the, of the you know, the 20s and 30s um, was uh, that more millionaires were made during that period of time, during the Great Depression, than any other period of time in, the, in our modern, you know, history. And why is that? That's because while a lot of people suffered, opportunity also presented itself. For every, every you know, yin, there's a yang, basically, right? There's always the other side of it. And so if you can recognize that opportunity, then you can take advantage of that and grow. Because a lot of people are hurting right now. A lot of people need help. And can you be there to help these people? That's really the question, okay? So a little bit about me. My name is Manny Cosling. I'm the founder and CEO of CFO Services Group. We're an accounting firm that's focused on bookkeeping and strategy for small businesses and small nonprofits. Um, but on top of that, I don't just know, you know, accounting and managing business finances in theory. I also run a business, CFO Services Group. Um, I'm also a serial entrepreneur. I've started several businesses in my lifetime. Some are successful, some are not. Um, so I've learned a lot of uh, hard earned hard learned, hard earned lessons over the last few years. I'm um, including, in fact, I actually had a business during 2008, 2009 uh, economic downturn. If you remember, we had a tiny recession during that period of time. And I did have a business during that time and it almost went under, but I was able to turn it around and get it to, to grow. So, uh, so I've been there, done that. Fortunately or unfortunately, this isn't the first time I've had a, a, an experience in a down economy. Um, but again, I promise you that you can turn it around and grow, okay? So I say all that to say that I understand what you may be going through and I can help you because I am going through it, believe it or not. I do feel that fear and anxiety, you know, kind of creep up from time to time. Um, so I do feel that, um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty right now, even in my business and all your businesses. Um, but I also know the, the steps and strategies that you can take to grow out of this situation. All right. So what I'm going to talk about are my 10 steps to take and not to take right now so that you can get to the other side of this and your business can grow and thrive during this period of time and really take advantage of the opportunity that's here. All right. So tip number one is not to panic. So right now, you know, there's a lot of fear and anxiety that's floating around um, uh, the country. Um, the news certainly is not really helping that. So if you turn on the news, it's all doom and gloom. And, you know, there's, you know, people are losing their lives. People are getting sick. Uh, businesses are closing. You know, people are being laid off. We have the highest unemployment rate, all this stuff, right? So if you listen to all this stuff, of course, you're going to naturally fall into that fear and anxiety. Oh my God, what's happening? We don't even know, right? And there is a lot of uncertainty right now. Uncertainty creates anxiety. We don't know what's happening. As human beings, we like to know what's going on so that we can plan things and we can kind of move step by step through our day and through our lives, right? We like that kind of structure. Right now, that structure has been completely tossed away. And so now we're having to quickly find our way in the world. Actually, Julian and I were just talking about that right before we started, how, you know, even, you know, learning how to use Zoom, online technologies, getting access to the internet, right? This is all new for a lot of people. So there's a lot of fear around that. And that fear creates panic, okay? But I don't want you to panic because there is, again, the other side of that. So the very first thing that you need to do is to take a deep breath, and just know that everything will be okay, that you will, you will be able to get yourself through to the other side of this. Okay, don't succumb to the fear because when you sit in fear, you start making decisions from that fear standpoint. Now you're making a decision from an emotional standpoint and a fearful emotion at that. That is not the place you wanna be right now. You do not wanna be making decisions for yourself, for your loved ones, and certainly from, for your business from that state of fear, that fearful emotion. You want to calm yourself first and get to a nice even state and then make a decision from that standpoint. So that's the very first thing that I can, I can tell you to do is, is to not panic, to really take that moment to calm yourself, okay? Because I can't help you as a CFO if you're not at that state, okay? So Step, my tip number two is to do rely on your team. So as a business, I would hope that you have developed a professional team of people 
to help you manage your business. You know, business is complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces that are constantly going on in your business. And as a result, it's very hard for anyone to run a successful growing business without a team of professionals that, uh, to help you, someone that you can turn to and ask a question and say, hey, I had this idea or I wanna do this, I wanna do this, what do you think? Okay, having that sounding board is so important as you grow your business. So I would hope that you've developed a team of professionals right now. Now, a team of professionals includes a management accountant, like, you know, someone like me, you know, a CFO, right? Someone that can help you think about your money, uh, an attorney, uh, uh, someone to help you with sales and marketing, so like a marketing consultant, uh, and a business coach, okay? So these are the types of people that we want on our team always and certainly right now during this moment of time. They will help you if you're feeling that fear and anxiety, they will help one, pull you out of it and get you back to a normal state. So they'll help you kind of retain, remain, get back to that calm and then help you start thinking through, okay, what can I do now to pivot my business so I can take advantage of the opportunity that's presented itself? What am I not seeing? Okay. Because you know, it's, it's, you know, and me, myself, sometimes I don't see what's right in front of me because I'm so in my business and I only see what's going on right here in my business that I have a hard time pulling myself away and seeing my business from a 10,000 foot view and seeing the rest of the landscape, right? I'm in the middle of the forest. I need to pull myself away from the forest and above so I can really see what's going on. And then maybe I see, oh, there's something actually right down the road from me that maybe if I'm stuck in the trees, I can't see. But if I can pull myself up, oh, I can see that there's something ahead that I can actually tap into. Well, that's what your, your team is there for. They can, because they're not so emotionally invested in your business, they can pull away and see what's coming down the road. And then they can help guide you to where that is, okay? So having a team is so, so important. So if you don't have a team, please form one now. Start looking for these people to put together because they'll help you navigate through this period of time, okay? So my tip number three is don't make cuts to your business yet. Okay, this is super important. Why? Your, your first natural instinct, now we've been in this a few weeks now, so you may have already done this, um, but you know, your natural instinct during a period of time like this is, well, I just, I need to cut something from my business, right? Okay. We're, we're gonna run out of money and this is happening, so I'm just gonna start cutting things, right? And it's a natural reaction because um, it's something that's sort of easier for us to do, right? It's something that's in our control. I can decide who I pay or not. I can make that decision right now. And it's not, I can just, hey, you know what? I'm gonna let this one go, this one go, this one go, and boom, they're gone. And it provides an immediate relief to my cash situation. Okay, but that is not a uh, that is not necessarily a good tactic to use. Now, as the saying goes, you can't cut your way to profitability. Okay, you cannot cut your way to profitability. Why is that? Because when you you're cutting it something that is there to help you run your business. So any if, if you're like me, every expense that I have in my business, I have carefully decided to incur that expense because I need that, that thing that that person is providing, right? I don't really have any fluff in my business. I don't have anything extra in my business. So if I were to cut something, if I were to cut an expense, I'm going to be hurting my business. I'm going to be hurting either the way I make money or the way my business operates. And as a result, I'm going to end up hurting myself further. So while it may kind of, you know, alleviate some pain in the immediate, pretty soon it's going to catch up to me. I'm not going to be able to make as much money or my business isn't going to be able to operate. So making a cut can be very dangerous and it's not something that you want to do lightly. So again, I want you to kind of go back to that first tip. Don't panic. I want you to calm yourself, get yourself to a nice even state and then make a decision from there what you want to do. Don't start making cuts out of fear, okay? And if you're going to make cuts, I want you to run it through your financial projections, which I'm going to talk about in a second, okay? So for right now, just keep in mind, don't make cuts yet. 
I want you to think the other way. I want you to think, how am I going to grow my way out of the situation, not cut my way out of the situation? Be focused on growth, not on cutting. Okay, very important. Okay, step number four, speaking of growth, is I do want you to diversify revenue streams. Now, why are businesses hurting right now? It's because a lot of, a lot of small businesses, and I, again, I talk to a lot of them, um, you, you've sort of niched yourself in a particular thing, okay? <clears throat> you've niched yourself in a particular product or service, or you've niched yourself with a particular client customer base, or a particular way of delivering your product or service. Okay, as a result, if that, if any one of those three things has now been cut off because of what's happening, you're in a, you're hurting right now. So the way to alleviate that is to start thinking about how you can more further diversify your revenue. Okay, come up with new revenue streams. Now, when we talk about diversifying revenues, there's three ways in which we diversify. It's on what I sell, who I sell it to, and how I deliver it. Okay. So what I sell, that's my product and service. Okay, what do I sell? If I sell this, can I sell something else? So I want you to think about the resources that you have on hand right now. And I want you to get really creative about this. Okay, if I sell this, is there something else that I can naturally do with the knowledge or materials I have right now that I can do? So for example, I was talking to someone that they sell, they do framing. So they, what they do is they create like frames for pictures and things like that. And she was telling me that um, she's having a tough time because her supplies have been cut off. So I don't know much about framing, but apparently they have a bunch of material, I think molding or something um, to create the frames, but she cannot get her hands on some of the other materials like glass and whatnot to kind of complete the frame. So we were chatting and I was like, well, that's interesting that you have a lot of what some material, but not another. So can you question, I'm wondering if other people have the opposite problem. Maybe they have too much glass and not enough of this molding. Can you maybe trade with them or can you sell off your excess supplies? And then she was like, you know what? I never thought about that. That's a great idea. I was like, well, that's perfect. Now you can make some extra money. You don't need all this material, sell it off and generate some extra cash. She had a lot of material. So for her, that would actually be a pretty good revenue stream right now. So that's the sort of ideas you want to think about is can you, with your existing knowledge or materials, can you pivot, right? If you have some knowledge around a certain thing, can you sell education, okay? So that brings us to the second one, which is your customer base. Who are you selling to? If your customer base right now doesn't have money, you need to think about who does have money because there are industries right now which are killing it. They're making a ton of money. And can you pivot and start selling to them, okay? So rather than thinking of just the end user of your product, think about who else in their ecosystem may be interested in buying. Just before I jumped on this, I was talking to a guy and um, he does camps for kids. He does like kid camps, right? And he's hurting because he's like, well, summer's our big moment you know, all the kids are out of school and we do all these camps and now I don't know what to do. And I was like, well, first of all, um, you know, kids are home right now and they're driving their parents nuts. So can you quickly create something to keep kids occupied while their parents are working? And he was like, oh, that's true. Okay. So that's, that's an example of the product and service. And then we went a step further and I said, well, rather than selling that idea to the parents, because they may be struggling for money right now, if they work for a bigger company, can you sell that to the company? And maybe the company can buy some of that time from you because that's a really great benefit for their employee right now. It can keep their employee working and distract their kids so that the employee can work. And he was like, oh, that's a really great idea. So see, it was just, you're doing the exact same thing. You're just selling it to someone else. It doesn't necessarily have to be the end user, okay? Now, the third way is how I deliver it. So again, same example, well, we do stuff in person for people. Yes, but can you pivot and deliver that online? Can you pivot and deliver that in a group? Okay, so again, be really creative there about what you can do. The more you can diversify your revenue streams, the better off you'll be because if something happens in the economy and someone is cut off and can't buy from you, you can quickly pivot and you have something else that you can quickly sell. So that is super important to do anytime 
in your business and certainly right now, create new revenue streams. Diversify as much as possible. Okay, next one is don't lose track of your sales pipeline. Because there's so much fear and anxiety, we tend to, you know, we, we tend to kind of want to stick our head in the sand and run away from the problem. And that's a very natural human reaction. And so you may kind of get into the pessimistic, well, I don't know what's going on with sales. So I just, I don't want to look at it. I'm afraid to look at what my sales look like. I'm afraid to look at my numbers, my bank account, and then just ignore it. Do not do that. This is not the time to ignore that. You really want to stay on top of what your sales look like. And if you really feel like you can't sell anything right now, I want you to go back to diversifying your revenue. That means that your revenue is not diversified enough. So think about what else you can do and then start planning out what your sales are gonna look like. Create, a, if you have a CRM system, that's great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Get a simple spreadsheet like Excel, get a simple spreadsheet or even do it on paper and create a little table. And on the left-hand side of the table, I want you to write down everything that you sell what you sell, who you sell it to, and how you deliver it. And for every iteration of that, I want you to just list it down there, okay? And then on the right-hand side in columns, I want you to put dates. I want you to put every week from here through the next few weeks. And then I, I literally want you in every cell after that, I want you to put down this week, how much of this can I sell? This week, how much of this can I sell? And I want you to go down the list and I want you to create a whole table there of what you think you can sell. That's gonna start giving you some idea as to what is really happening in your business. Because if you're not doing that, you're guessing. You're coming from that emotional standpoint. I want you to start putting numbers on paper because that will help pull you out of the emotion and into the reality. And from there, you can start making better decisions about what you're gonna do with your business. So keeping track of your sales is so important. And once you create that, I don't want you to just let it, leave it sitting on your, on your desk. I want you to every day, every morning, update that, that, that table, okay? Based on the new information I got today, how are my sales going to look for the next few weeks? What do I think is going to happen? Okay, information is, is flying. Like, it's happening every, you know, every few hours. We're getting new information, right? Now we just heard that maybe the economy is going to open again, right? We don't know. So you want to really be on top of that and be updating this stuff regularly. Okay. So along with that, my next thing that you should do is also update your financial and cash forecast. So once you, once you do those sales, I want you to take your sale into the rest of your business. How does your sales affect your cost of goods sold, which is the amount of money that you spend to create what you sell? How is it going to affect your general sales and administrative expenses? And then ultimately, how does it affect your cash? If I sell this, when am I going to get the cash for it? Okay. So similar concept, I want you to create some projections and think about how it's going to ripple throughout your business and really pay attention to the cash forecast at the bottom. What does my cash look like over the next few weeks? Now, if you're getting some money from the government, great, put that money in there. We're going to forecast that you're going to get money, okay? But again, it's going to pull you out of that emotion and into fact. What does my business actually look like? And then from there, I can start making decisions. If you do need to cut, by the way, I want you to do this first and then run that cut through your financials, okay? If I do make this cut, what is it going to look like? What else is it going to affect in my business? Because a cut will have a ripple effect throughout your business, for sure. So you want to make sure that if it has a ripple effect throughout your business, that it's going to give you the right effect and you're not going to end up hurting yourself more in the long run, okay? Very, very important. And I can help you do that, by the way, if you need help. All right, along with that, don't neglect your bookkeeping because guess what? You're gonna need information. You're gonna need real information to put into those financial forecasts. Right now, you have to, have to, have to be on top of your numbers. I know everyone hates doing it. Everyone hates bookkeeping, right? I Look, I even hate bookkeeping and I'm an accountant. I'm saying that's what we do for a living. We do bookkeeping, but I have staff do that now, which is nice. Uh, no, but you know, it's, 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 it's kind of a pain. I admit, but it is so important. And the reason why we do it is because it's information. And right now you're all on this webinar because you need information. You're looking for information. That is exactly what bookkeeping is. That's exactly what your numbers are. It's information and it's, it's even better. It's information. It's your information. 
It's your numbers. It's exactly what's going on in your business. So you need to keep on top of your bookkeeping so that you keep a pulse on your business. And then you take those numbers and put them into your, into your projections so that you can get real information about your business. So don't neglect your bookkeeping, okay? Do seek financial assistance. And I'm gonna talk a little bit here um, in just a little bit about where you can get your money, okay? So there are some government programs that you've, as you've heard about and whatnot. So what I want you to do is to go after that money. I've heard, again, talking to a lot of people, there, some people are shy about asking for money. Well, maybe I don't need it. Well, maybe I'm not sure. I don't know if I should apply. This is not the time to be shy. Go get the money, I'm telling you. Apply for it. Don't wait. Already, as of today, if you've heard the news, as of yesterday, some of the federal programs have closed. It's already too late to get that money. You do not want to be caught off guard. Apply for whatever money you can get right now because if you don't think you need it now, you may need it two or three weeks from now. We don't know what's happening. This is the great, the great unknown. So don't wait. Get the money now. And then two or three weeks or four weeks from now, if you get the money and you don't need it, pay it back. No worries. But at least you have it just in case. Okay. Very, very important. Okay. Number nine, don't forget your insurance policies. As a business, you should have insurance that covers your risk. Insurance is all about covering risk. I don't know what's going to happen with my business. So I get an insurance policy to protect myself so that if there's a great loss that I have, I don't end up losing a bunch of money because of that. That's exactly what insurance is for. Well, guess what? We just, welcome to the risk, okay? We just had a major loss. Something that no one really foresaw just happened. So that is exactly what insurance is for. It's to cover you in moments like this, the great unknown. So if you have an insurance policy, you should be talking to your insurance broker to find out, can I get any claim money from, from my insurance policies, okay? Business disruption or something like that, all right? So definitely touch base with your insurance broker to see what you can get out of your insurance policy. You've been paying them premiums this whole time. It's about time they pay you something back, right? And then the final one to wrap it up is do recession-proof your business. So again, this is all about recession-proofing your business to make sure that if any shocks happen to the economy moving forward, that you're not caught off guard, okay? That your business is solid and no matter what the economy does, up, down, or sideways, you're gonna be okay. You'll be able to make money and your business will continue to grow during that period of time. So it's all about recession-proofing your business. All right, and if you follow all these tips, then I promise you that you will survive. Your competition may not survive, but you will survive. And you will be there to help those in need. That's the most important thing. There's so much need right now that you need to survive so that you can be around to help those that will be in need, especially if your competition, you know, or the others that are doing that work, they go away, then you really need to step up to the plate right now. That's what I'm telling my team. I'm like, this is not about us sales or anything like that. This is about us helping the community to get through this period of time. We need you to survive so that we can survive so that everyone can survive we all rely on each other okay so real quick let me talk about money because i know that's that's of interest and i am going to go more into detail on this in the upcoming webinar but just real quick there's um a few pockets of money federal state local and private programs federal programs is the one i i really focus on but just keep in mind that there are state local and private programs which become more important right now because some of the federal programs have just closed, at least temporarily, okay? So with that, there's the IDLE and the PPP, all right? This information is changing frequently. Um, so the five I wanted to highlight real quick, the first one is the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. That's the big one that everyone's been talking about. You'll get a loan and then it will be forgiven. So it basically becomes free money. Now, as of yesterday morning, this program has been put on pause we have every reason to believe that it will start up again in the next few weeks, but for right now it is on pause. So just be prepared to apply for it once it opens up. And again, I'll go into more detail on that next week. The, uh, econo the SBA's disaster loan called the IDLE, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, that one has also temporarily stopped. 
We also think it's going to reopen, but that's a disaster loan that you apply for. And it is a loan. It's not free money like the PPP. It is something you're going to have to repay back. There's something called the employee retention credit. If you have employees, you can get a payroll tax credit to help you cover some of their costs. There's federal sick and family leave, which if you own a business, every single one of you can, can apply for this. You can get up to two weeks of your pay covered by the federal government if you're sick and 12 weeks of family leave covered, okay? And what you're gonna do is apply for that. If you have employees, you apply on a payroll tax return, but if you're just a sole owner of a business, then you can apply for that on your tax return. Which again, I'll go into more detail next week. There's also payroll tax deferral. If you have employees, you can defer some payroll taxes, okay? You can take both the PPP and IDLE, which again, I will talk about next week, but that's really important to know. You can get multiple, you can get all of these things at the same time, essentially, which is a lot of help to a business right now, okay? Keep in mind that this money, though, is just a Band-Aid for you. It's really just meant to keep you moving along for two or three months, which is why you have to take all the other steps I talked about. You have to ultimately grow your way out of the situation. You have to stay calm. You have to think about diversifying your revenue. You have to stay on top of your sales and your financial projections. Okay, you have to do all of that to ultimately grow your way out of this situation because that's, that's the only way out of this really, okay? And if you need help, we are providing free uh, private disaster planning sessions and also help with loans. So there are um, still state and local programs available. So if like if you're in Maryland or Virginia, DC doesn't have anything yet. Um, they did have something, it closed recently, um, but Maryland, Virginia still have some stuff and then some counties like Montgomery County. And if you're in Virginia, um, Fairfax County, has some additional stuff that you can apply for. So there's, there's some other programs out there. So we're helping you um, seek those out and apply for free. We're doing that completely pro bono, um, again, to help out the community right now. So just go to that website, cfoservicesgroup.com slash COVID-19, and you can schedule an appointment there. Okay, and for everyone who's listening to recording, same thing, just go there and, and, and schedule an appointment. All right. So uh, that's it. I will stop and turn it over for questions. <clears throat> awesome. So I encourage you, if you have questions, uh, there's a little hand button that you can use on, uh, on, your, on your Zoom. If you also feel comfortable doing this, you can turn off your video and just raise your hand the old fashioned way. You can also type your questions. Um, if you want to ask them anonymously. And I do have some anonymous questions so far. Um, the, the question is like, so how do you recession proof your business? What do you mean? How do, how do you recession proof your business? Yes. Well, that, well, that's everything I just went over. So, so diverse, I mean, it really starts with diversifying your revenue. That's how you recession proof your business. Okay. So you need to think about how else you can sell. So, if, I mean, I'm happy to also, if you want to talk about that, whoever asked the question, you can uh, unmute yourself and we can talk about like your specific situation and how to do that. Or you can just schedule a session with me. But it really is about diversifying your revenue stream, okay? So think about what else you can sell right now. And the more you can diversify, the more you will recession-proof your business because if you can't sell to this person or this person anymore because we're in a recession if you're trying to sell to a private individual right and we're in a recession well people aren't going to have money right that's the whole point of a recession individuals will have less money so they're not going to be spending as much you can't sell to them anymore you got to think about who else is going to have money though during that period of time because Someone will always have money during these periods of time. And can you pivot to sell to them? That's how you recession proof your business. So the more you can diversify, the better. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so another question uh, I saw is, so what if you, uh, you, you're a, a hands-on kind of business, like you're a masseuse or you cut hair Mm -hmm. um what are some virtual delivery or some new revenue streams you can seek yeah that's great okay so let's say you're a masseuse okay so let's take that example all right so normally this is the way you sell right i i so my what's my product and service so let's go to three channels my product and service is massage 
okay? Who's my customer? Let's say the person, right? The person's my customer. And um, how do I deliver my service? I deliver it in person, okay? So that's the three ways that you deliver, right? Your, your who, what, and how, <clears throat> okay? So let's start getting creative there and see, can we come up with more what's? Can we come up with more who's? And can we come up with more how's? So let's do, let's have a little fun with this. And this is all about being creative and throw some ideas out there. So let's start with what. What else can I do as a massage therapist with the materials I have and the knowledge I have? Well, Juliana, play along with me. What else do you think you could do? Um, it's a good question. I... And think now this is right, going to right. stretch your entrepreneurial mind, right? You really have to think about it. Yeah. I've seen some people do. So for, for nail design places, they're uploading Instagram kind of video feeds on how to do your own nails. Yeah. Um, there mm -hmm. have been uh, people doing YouTube videos on how, you know, how to cut hair. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but even then, there's very few people that will will pay um, for for you know for a video, right? Um, so, what, do you have any other ideas you you, yeah. you suggest? Okay, no, but that's good. So, video is one. What is video? Video is education. Okay. So what you're saying is I can sell education. Now let's get, we'll get to the who in a second because someone will buy, it, but let's just stick with that. So when you do video, you're talking about education and you're right with the knowledge that I have, I can educate people. Okay. So now you just got to figure out who wants to be educated and who's willing to buy the education. Okay. See, that's the next question, but let's stick with that. So we can educate people, right? If I do massage, I probably have some materials that I have, right? I probably have massage oils and whatnot, okay? Which means that I'm getting them from somewhere. So another idea is, can I sell massage materials right now, okay? So maybe I can procure some massage oils and start a little retail business out of this, okay? Maybe I can brand them with my name, okay? And so in this moment in time, I can start a massage store. Maybe I can get some massage tools and whatnot. Okay, going back to education, I can teach people massage techniques. I can teach them how to use massage tools and whatnot, right? So that's just some quick examples of some ways I can make money. Now, the next question is, who is going to pay for this? Okay, so you're right. Maybe that, that person that I do massage, maybe they're not going to pay for it. But who is going to pay for it? Okay. So right now, people are stressed out, okay? Think about who's in need. People are working at home stressed out. Who will buy massage therapy? Maybe their employers will buy massage for them as a nice perk, right? Maybe a business, an HR department in a large company will say, you know what? As a gift to our employees, we want to give them the education on how to give massages to each other, right? Or a self-massage. So maybe they will buy a package where you provide some education yeah. and trust me, that will happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. What happened also hospitals right now, doctor's offices, therapeutic massage is a, is a thing. And for people that actually have the coronavirus, there's a lot of discomfort. So I happen to know this because my spouse is a nurse. So I happen to know that mas that massage is one of the techniques they use to lessen some of the symptoms. So can you provide that service right now? Okay. Wow. Again, the hospitals, don't, yeah. yeah. Don't think about you. You got to think about who else is out there. Don't just think about who you sell to. You really got to stretch your imagination here. Who else can I sell to? Can I sell couples massages right online? Now this goes to the third method of delivery. How are you going to deliver it? You can't deliver it in person, but can you do a private one-on-one -on -one session with a couple and teach them how to massage each other during this period of time, right? A little bit more intimate. Can you do a group class and maybe for $10, okay, I'm going to get a group of a hundred people together for $10 each. And I'm going to, you know, on a Wednesday night, teach them how to do massage, right? And maybe as part of that $10, they get a little kit that I put together and I mail to them 
of massage oils and hot stones and blah, 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 blah. Maybe I can upsell them on that. Maybe they get a bottle of wine with that too. You make it fun, right? Hey, we're going to get a massage group together for 50 bucks. You get oil, hot stones, a bottle of wine, sit back, relax. We're going to put on some good Shanti music and massage each other, right? So, yeah. Children, yeah. same thing. We get children involved in this, right? Can we teach children how to massage right now, right? There are a lot of people who are staying at home um, right now. Um, so they're seeing more of their significant other than ever before. So that, that would be interesting. Yeah. And you know what the amazing thing of that is? Yes. I didn't spend one extra dollar on any of this. I used my existing resources yeah. to come up with new ways to diversify my revenue that guess what is now recession proof because maybe someone can't pay me $150 to do a one-on-one -on -one massage, but I can get a hundred people to pay me $10 to do group massage. And in any recession, that will still be, that will still work. Right. Right. I think, I think it needs some testing, right? So getting creative and just testing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and we got plenty of time right now to do all the testing we want. Sadly, yeah. So does anybody have any other questions they would like to ask? They can, you can turn off your mic and ask them directly. Uh, in fact, if you want to turn off your camera, you're welcome. Um, or if, if you like, you can type it out on the chat and I will read it for you. All right, well. Awesome. Well, okay, if guys. you do want to do that, feel free to schedule an appointment and I'm happy to work through some of this with you. Perfect. Um, so you can schedule that appointment in this, as you can see in this slide. Um, also, before I let you guys know, go, um, we Street Entrepreneurs has founders retreats that we're still going to host. Um, and we've postponed them, but you can you can apply right now on Street Entrepreneurs forward slash apply. StreetEntrepreneurs.org forward slash apply. Um, and in these retreats, we cover all of the topics that are needed to to start grow and sustain your business um we also have talent exchange sessions to connect you to mentors and coaches and finally um at the end of the founders retreat participants select the most promising venture and then that venture goes on to street pitch uh, which is like american idol meets shark tank and the people watching vote with their money on their favorite entrepreneurs and you choose how you want people to support you whether with product purchases in-kind contributions um, or pre-orders. Um, so I, I hope you'll apply. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. And thank you so much, Manny, for being here and sharing your, your talent and expertise. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And Eric says, thank you. I will do that. Awesome. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.